Hey guys, Hackersploit here, back again with another video. Welcome back to the Penetration Testing Bootcamp. As I said, we're going to be resuming from where we left off. So we'll be exploring, uh, you know, enumeration with Server Manager. So again, this is part of the post-exploitation uh, section of the pen testing bootcamp we, where we were exploring, uh, you know, post-exploitation techniques within an active directory environment, but really uh, primarily focused on Windows, right? So uh, we had completed, uh, you know, golden ticket attacks with Mimikatz and we were now, uh, you know, exploring uh, AD enumeration with Server Manager. So I've already uh, started up the target system here. And uh, as you can see, uh, we need to actually read through the description. Um, so this is really not applicable in terms of exploitation unless RDP is enabled on the target. But, you know, that's what we're trying to uh, get an understanding of here. So uh, because servers are hardly ever logged on unless it's for maintenance, this always gives you an easy way for enumerating only using the built-in Windows features such as the server manager. Uh, if you already have a domain admin, you have a lot of access to the server manager in order to change trusts, add or remove users, look at groups. Uh, this can be an entry point to find other users uh, with other sensitive information on, on their machines or find other users on the domain network with access to other networks in order to pivot. And of course, we'll be exploring pivoting as we actually move on. All right, so the only way to access the server manager is to RDP into the server and access the server over an RDP connection. All right, so uh, we'll only be going over the basics such as looking at users, etc., etc. right? Uh, now, as I said, our primary access vector is via RDP. Now, you know, in some cases you may not be, uh, oh, you know, you may not be familiar with uh, whether or not uh, RDP has been enabled on the target, but a quick port scan uh, will reveal that, especially uh, if it's running on the default RDP port, which is port 3389, right? So again, what we'll do here is we'll just copy the target IP. And in order to log in via RDP on Linux, you can either use a, an RDP client like Remina, or you can use X-Free RDP, which is uh, my personal preference. So I'll just open up my terminal here. And, uh, you know, I can say X-Free RDP. And uh, we can then specify the actual domain. Uh, and uh, the domain in this case, uh, let me just make sure I have all the details, is controller. All right, so we'll say controller. And uh, we then need to specify the user, which is uh, done or can be done using the U option here. And the user in this case is administrator. And then we specify the target IP address using the V option here. So I'll just paste in the target IP and let me just copy the password. All right, so uh, I've copied the password and uh, we'll just hit enter and hopefully we're able to get a session. Uh, one thing I want to do is change the resolution here. So I'm just going to use the size option to do that. So I'm going to say size is going to be, we can, you know, utilize maybe 1920 by 1080, but let's try 1280 by 720. So we, we have some, you know, some a good resolution to begin with. Uh, we hit enter. Um, it's going to ask us to whether we trust the above certificate. I'm going to yes. Uh, password, I'll paste in the password there. And uh, we'll give that a couple of seconds to actually initiate the RDP session. There we are. So uh, we get access to the Windows target. And uh, of course, our access is via the administrator user on the domain controller itself, right? So I'll just wait for this to start up. All right, so the RDP session is started up and is running. So you can see we have server manager already opened here. Server manager in this context essentially uh, is a really just a utility or a management you know console that allows you to uh, manage your you know your domain uh, you know all computers that are part of the domain uh, your DNS configuration etc cetera, etc cetera. It's, it's essentially used to manage your Active Directory uh, environment right and of course this is on the domain controller itself um, so if we take a look at the actual questions here or rather the actual enumeration section we can see that um, this is what Windows Server Manager will look when you first open it up. Uh, the main tabs will be the most interesting are the tools and the manage tabs. And the tools tab is where you'll find uh, most of your information such as users, groups, trusts, uh, computers, etc. All right, so it tells us not to worry about ADCS, ADDS, uh, and DNS or file, uh, file and storage services. These are set up for exploitation of the Active Directory and uh, don't have much use for post exploitation. Okay, so if we head back over into server manager, and I'm just going to expand that. 
uh, you can see that you have ADCS, right? And we're currently on the dashboard. So uh, ADCS essentially allows you to manage your uh, certificate services. A ADDS uh, stands for, you know, your Active Directory Domain Services. And then of course you have uh, DNS. So if I click on DNS, this will allow you to essentially, you know, uh, list out the servers as well as the events. Um, so if I just scroll down here, you can see you have your servers, events, services, as well as uh, the best practices, analyzer, performance, etc. If we go back to the dashboard and we take a look at ADDS, uh, you can see this will tell us, uh, you know, the current servers online, and this is our domain controller. Uh, the events for the domain controller, the services, whether they are running or rather their status. So you know. For example, you can see that net logon is currently running. Uh, we have Kerberos, uh, the Kerberos key distribution center is running and you know, so on and so forth. So uh, that's just in regards to managing an Active Directory environment. And we'll be taking a look at this uh, when we'll be exploring uh, the process of setting up your own Active Directory lab. For now, I just wanted to give you an introduction to that. So it looks like we get some Windows updates. That's always something uh, that you typically expect. All right, so now that we've gained access, um, again, we, as it says, we can prim prim the two primary um, aspects that they want us to focus on are the Manage uh, menu as well as the Tools menu. So again, within Manage, you can add uh, roles and features. You can remove roles and features, add servers, etc. And then, of course, you have your Server Manager properties. And if we take a look at tools, we have act, uh, you know, we have access to the Active Directory Administrative Center, to the domains and trusts. Uh, we also have the sites and services and users and computers. So let's click on that. And uh, I'm just going to give that a couple of seconds to open up. And if we take a look at the actual questions, uh, you can see we've already done that. It'll say uh, that uh, this will pull up a list of all users on the domain. That is correct. So uh, what tool allows us to view the event logs? That's very easy on Windows. That's always going to be the event viewer. So let me just type that in, event viewer. Yeah, that is correct. Um, so let's take a look at the event view as well. So I'm just going to click on tools. And if we scroll down here, uh, we should have the event view. There we are. Um, so that will allow you to view the you know events on a Windows system. So uh, I'll just uh, open that up. And uh, again, Windows events are fairly simple to understand. If I click on the Windows logs, they're sorted into three main categories. You have application security and system. So application essentially gives you the logs, uh, you know, based or primarily for applications and, uh, you know, the, uh, any errors they may experience uh, when they were started, when they were shut down, you know, so you can get information like that. As for security, you'll probably get, you know, the authentication or, or you know, uh, you know, yeah, the authentication logs uh, and any other, you know, security uh, based uh, events that have been logged here. And then, of course, for system, this will track information like system reboot, system shutdowns, any issues with the kernel, et cetera, et cetera. So let me just minimize event viewer. And let's take a look at um, the actual Active Directory users and computers. So uh, the second question is, what is the SQL service password, right? So the SQL service password, let's uh, open up RDP here. And we have the SQL service password. We'll click on that. Um, so we have the ability here to, uh, again, manage the account uh, but from this perspective uh, you can see that uh, under the description it says that the password is my password one two three now um, you know you typically will have access to the target system through some form of shell whether it be a command shell uh, you know it could be uh, psxec or uh, you could be using a lateral movement tool as we explored previously in the red team series uh, but in this case, uh, you know, it's provided to us here. And of course, I don't recommend changing user passwords, although you can do that. But for this case, we'll just say or paste in the password there. So that's fairly simple. All right. So we've essentially com completed that. It's very easy to do this when you have access to the target via RDP. Uh, but let's set up the stage for the next section, which is maintaining access. And within this section, I really didn't like the way they went about doing this because, uh, again, I'm not really a fan of transferring payloads onto the target system. Um, so, again, yeah, that's not really what I'm interested in. What we can do is get a, a PowerShell session on the target system and then upgrade that to a Meterpreter session. And uh, we can then, uh, you know, gain our access uh, through Meterpreter. And then after that, we can take a look at the various uh, Windows persistence techniques uh, that we can perform with Metasploit as well as some local persistence techniques. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to open up uh, a new tab here. So um, I'm currently using Tmux and I'll say sudo msf console. And uh, let me just type in my password there. 
okay we'll give that a couple of seconds and uh, that should be that should start up msf console for me and we'll use the web delivery payload or the web delivery module if you will so i'm going to just search for it here so uh, search web delivery and there we are this will allow us to deliver a payload or some uh, you know a powershell command uh, that we can execute on the target system and the payload is then uh, stored or hosted on our on a web server uh, on the Kali Linux uh, system on my Kali Linux system so as you can see this is script web delivery and you can use this module for you know various environments in this case we're using Windows so I'll say use uh, we are not using Python because the Windows target doesn't have Python installed so we really can't execute uh, Python scripts or Python code so I'm going to set the payload to, uh, we're going to use a non-staged payload. We're just going to say set payload to Windows. And uh, this is PowerShell reverse TCP. There we are. If we show the options for this module, uh, you can see we need to set up the server host because we're currently accessing the target through a VPN connection. So I need to explicitly uh, set that up. Uh, the server port is port 8080 which is fine we don't want to set up an ssl certificate that may be useful if you're trying to make it you know legitimate uh, and the uri path will leave it to the random options here um, as for the payload options we need to set up the lhost option so let's uh, do that right now so i'll say i have config and we'll set that to the actual uh, tunnel zero interface ip so we're going to say set lhost um, there we are and if we show the options again, we can set the L port option, but in this case, I'm not going to do that. Uh, do we want to load any PowerShell modules? No. Uh, the exploit target is currently set to Python. We need to change that. So I'm going to say set target. And in this case, uh, we are using PowerShell. So we can either use PowerShell or PowerShell binary. Let's try, uh, let's use the PowerShell binary exploit target option. So I'm going to say PowerShell uh, binary, hit enter. Show options again. Do we need to configure anything else? Yeah, we need to configure the actual server host. So I'm going to say set server host to our current IP. And once we're good to go, um, I'm sure that this module, if I say show advanced, uh, this module will encode the PowerShell code. Um, I'm not really sure. Let's just hit show advanced there. And uh, we can see that uh, PowerShell um there we are that's what i'm looking for encoded command is set to true as well as the amsi bypass option that's also set to yes or to true so this will request amsi sbl bypass before the stage yeah uh in this case we're not using a staged uh, module um because we're not using meterpreter so we, we really don't need to set that uh, we'll just let we'll, we'll actually just use the encode option or set that to true and i'll just hit run uh so it's going to run the job as uh, or you know run it as a background job and it should give us the powershell uh, code here to execute so we can execute this on the target system through the command prompt so i'll just open up the command prompt here on the target system and i'll say you know cmd and i'll give that a couple of seconds to open up uh, you know this is running uh, you know in the cloud so we need to be cognizant of that so i'll just paste that in there and this will close or will actually terminate the command prompt session after it's executed. But let's just hit enter. All right. So once we hit enter, we should say uh, we should see that it's uh, sending the stage. In this case, uh, let's see whether it's actually doing that. I don't see any uh, any information being displayed. No sessions. As for the jobs, if we say jobs, uh, well, actually stopped all the jobs. But we can run that again. Uh, I'm pretty sure I need to set the actual PowerShell. Uh, encode option to false although i'm not really sure um, so let's say set uh, psh and we'll set the uh, we're looking for the encoded command to false right and uh, if we now hit run uh, the code is now uh, again not encoded in base 64 so again we can just open that up in a command prompt here so cmd we can also run it as administrator and uh, we what i'll do is i'll get rid of the hidden option there or the hidden flag so that uh, this is not going to be hidden once i hit execute uh so there we are and i'll just hit enter there we go 
there we are so web delivery delivering the payload that opens up windows powershell and it should execute that and give us a powershell session um in this case uh, probably isn't working because the there we are, it actually is working so we get a powershell session open so if i type in dir uh, sorry sessions there we are sessions one if i say dir and I hit enter, looks like we're not getting any output, but let's give that a couple of seconds. There we are, it looks like it's working. So we have, uh, you know, we have access to the target system via a uh, PowerShell command session. So I can put this in the background and I can upgrade this session to a meterpreter session by saying sessions uh, upgrade one. Uh, let's see whether this will work. Otherwise, we'll have to use the module, uh, the actual shell to meterpreter module manually to configure it sessions nothing there yeah well, it looks like we'll have to use it so i uh, will have to use it manually so i'm just going to copy that there say use show options uh we'll set the l host option to uh need to get the target ip again uh so let me just copy this here that's the actual connection so i'll say set l host to this ip here set the session to one Let's see whether we're able to get a interpreter session. Is it being used by another process? We list out our jobs. Yeah, it is being used by another process. Uh, so it's going to stop exploit multi handler. Let's set the L port then to 4422. And I'll hit run. And uh, let's see whether we get a interpreter session. If not, we'll have to again, you know, transfer the payload manually because uh, for some reason, yeah, it looks like it's sending the stage. Uh, let's see whether we get it. So session still nothing. So it's sending the stage. It doesn't look like the uh, stage is being executed. So we may have to use a, a non-stage meterpreter payload. Um, let's just see whether I get. Yeah, there we are. So we get a meterpreter session. That took a while. So sessions two. There we are. Sys info. Nothing displayed there. That's weird. Uh, we're probably executed really slowly i'm not really sure why it's not giving us any output uh yeah so it looks like it's uh, kind of slow the connection to the target is uh you know has some lag so i'm just going to wait for this to actually output what we typed in so i'm just going to type in sys info again there we are so that's working out fine now so again we've gained access to the target system via um you know via a meterpreter payload or you know a powershell uh, command session and we did that using the actual web delivery uh, module, which is much better than transferring a payload manually, then executing it. Uh, and of course, there's a few artifacts uh, that are on the disk when we use this particular technique. All right, so get use ID. And uh, there we are. So if we load incognito now, I just want to test something here. So load incognito. And uh, let's list out the tokens because I logged in using a, an interactive uh, session through RDP. We should have some delegate tokens available. So uh, list tokens, uh, you. Yeah, so we have the delegate tokens available and we can, of course, elevate to anti authority system or impersonate our, you know, that particular access token. So I'm going to say impersonate token and I'll just paste that in there. There we are. So you know, get use ID. We now have anti-authority system privileges. All right. So uh, again, all that I wanted to cover in this video is enumeration with server manager and how we can gain access to the target system. Uh, if you if you're accessing the target via RDP, this is a you know really easy way of gaining access to the target uh, system through a PowerShell command session, and then of course how to upgrade that to a meterpreter session. And now that we've gained access again, we can now take a look at how to establish persistence. And of course, we're going to bypass this entire uh, process here of, uh, you know, transferring it onto the target, uh, you know, et cetera, et cetera. So, uh, yeah, that's going to be it for this video. And uh, I'll be seeing you in the next video. A huge thank you to all of our Patreons. Uh, your support is greatly appreciated and this is a formal thank you. So thank you Shamir Douglas, Ryan Carr, Sandor, Michael Busby, Sid Saab, Doozy, Dafim Bari, Dustin Umpress and Michael Hubbard. Your support is greatly appreciated and you keep us making even more high quality content for you guys. So thank you.